Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amun Shiktivan, and in this video, we are going to solve a very interesting problem. Like this, commonly happens to everyone who is doing UI automation. But we are, I haven't seen a much, you know, cleaner way of implementing this. So we thought, why should I not cover this in this particular uh, framework series, right? So I am picking up some of the peculiar, uh, you know, commonly occurring problems which doesn't have cleaner implementations. And trying to come up with good good implementations right if you have some problems in your mind that you are trying to solve in ua automation but you don't find a very good solution you can please leave that in the comment i'll try to come up with a very good solutions for that right so in this particular class we are going to focus on a very simple use case where there is a page and you want to validate multiple components in the page right right now in the head hey i'm going it looks like a very simple thing i can write a few codes and then i can get this done but the problem here is Let's say there are 10 fields that you want to validate or 15 fields you want to validate in a, or 15 different components you want to validate in a page. The implementation is, is going to have a lot of boiler plates and the code reliability go for a task. So how can we avoid this? How can we provide a much cleaner implementation which is also scalable and also readable and also maintainable, right? So that's what we're going to do with the help of validator classes and with the help of Asset J in this particular video, right? Let's dive quickly into the uh, website. I'll give you the problem statement now. Uh, let's say this is the Orange HRM homepage and I want to validate three different things here. One, I want to validate whether the lo the source, let's say this particular uh, source text here, the web address, the particular thing, and then the logo.png. This is actually pointing to the right logo, right? Because this normally, comes from somewhere and we want that to be, you know, a uh, correct string, right? So that's the first validation. Again, the second validation can be, let's say I want to validate this marketplace link in the in the, in the top right corner is, is displayed. And also the third one is, there is a header here. So this is a basically a header here. So when I inspect this, this is header one, right? So this is basically a header. I want to validate whether this is dashboard because Sometimes this is displayed as dashboard two. Sometimes it is with the different names. So you want to validate this particular thing is definitely dashboard. And this source string is equals to some particular string. And then the marketplace link is present. So, so these three different things, you know, can you uh, pause the video for a bit and then try to come up with the code that, you know, uh, that can solve this problem. Yes, you can write into three different test cases and you can validate them, but here, as he mentioned, there are different ways to solve it, but how we are going to solve uh, without writing a lot of binary pages, also not compromising on the clean core or, or the uh, you know readability of the test. So this way, we are going to have a validator class that can help us to solve. For example, now we have three things to solve. Um, let me show you the, the code, how the code looks. So this is the code. So it's, it's pretty simple, but very effective. Let's say I want to, uh, create an object for this login page to access the login method. And once I log in with this, I want to get the home page validator, right? So, and I'm trying to assert whether this home page validator, the, the marketplace link is present, whether the header names equals dashboard. So this is what we want to tell, right? So the header name equals dashboard and the logo source string containing this particular text, right? This is pretty much what we want. And look, the code here, it's pretty easy pretty neat and very much readable. So, so Amudan, I didn't understand what is this home page validator and I don't see how we can write assertion like this. Again, guys, if you haven't watched my assert J playlist uh, on custom assertions, how we can create custom assertions using assert J, you do watch that because that's where this comes from. But this validator page is, is pretty new. Let's go here and see what's happening. Oh, I have a very simple page here uh, that is top home page. And the method is get home page validator. And I'm just simply using a builder pattern to build this whole stuff, right? So maybe this might be a little confusing. So what I can do, I can, you know, uh, build this from the scratch to avoid confusion. But for now, let's go to this home page validator. It's a very simple POJO. I'm not using hash maps or list or to store all these things. I'm using a POJO because it's much easier to assert a POJO than a hash map, right? Uh, so what I'm doing, I have created a validator class that is home page validator. Uh, I want to validate three different things. So I'm creating different 
uh, you know variables for them so for example header name i want to validate the string so i'm using string for marketplace link i want to validate with whether this is present or not so i'm using a boolean so this is just a different ways right so you can also validate whether the link is exactly having marketplace i'm, I'm not worried about the assertions for now i'm just telling we can do different types of validations here so if you want to check for the presence use boolean you want to validate the content use string so so we want to validate these three things and i'm also using a builder here and i'm also using getter from numbox so that we can use get methods to get the values set sit on these so so let's go back to the home page class and here uh, so first this logo right so this logo is basically present here uh, in the top menu so as i initially mentioned this is a top menu component a home page consists of multiple components and this is a top menu component okay so if you haven't if you didn't understand what this composition means you might have to go back to a few videos and then watch what is composition why i split this uh, home page into different components for example uh, I, i'll go to the top menu component and i have already created the the locators just to save some time for example the logo i'm using by.xpath and uh, I'm using by dot xpath and the alt equal to orange hrm as the xpath thing, right? So, and for marketplace, I'm just trying to inspect this and I'm using uh, id. That, there is an id, so I'm directly using id mp underscore link, right? So, what I want to do with this is first, I want to get the attribute of source from the logo, right? So, for that, uh, I have a method called as get logo source string, uh, which basically using page action helper that's a that's a util class that i'm using i want to get the attribute here again guys this might be a little confusing but again this this basically leverages lambdas and functional interface implementation here so what i'm doing in normal case what we normally do if you want to get some attribute if you want to create a wrapper method we will pass the attribute name and then do a lot of things there right so you want to pass the attribute name and then you get the out of it but with this let's say let's go here in this class and no notice i am passing the by for which element i want to operate upon so and then i i want to so when there is a web element i am using a functional right so that takes in a web element and returns string again guys i have a entire playlist on java 8 if you haven't watched that please do watch that because most of my code leverages java 8 so that i i start to write much cleaner way of code right so now uh so i am passing the by and this function basically needs a web element as an input and returns the string so what i am doing attribute functions that apply so this basically needs a web element right but i only have by so i want to convert this by to web element so i am just doing driver dot find element by once you do this if this function is what you want to do whatever you want to do you can you do with this right it's up to you what you want to do you can do with this i am not controlling which attribute and all that so when i am calling this get attribute right when i go to top in a component i am just simply saying i pass the by now i want to get something out of this so when i say e e dot now i have list of all the options that i want to do but i you know i want to return things so let's say i want to use get attribute i can do src i can do a b c d whatever the attribute i want to fetch i can do it so i the client gets more control in this case and also i have a lot of options to leverage the same way for the is marketplace link present so i'm using uh, same kind of implementation here but i'm this time i'm using predicate so predicate is something that takes in some some input and returns true or false in our case it's going to return is displayed or not right so so i'm just saying element predicate dot test and i want a web element i only have by here so i'm converting the by to web element right and here it, it should be something like whenever i receive something e dot is displayed i can directly do this but this is just a uh, must easier way to convert into a method reference so so it's more readable right so again if, if you have so, so much of things here you can just show this present so so it's much more readable if i do a static import it's up to you but yeah so now again guys not many people do uh, use static imports let's say even if they use static imports they won't import with star they they import with uh, different methods so so 
it's much readable and understandable but again guys it's up to you so now um, let's now we have the stop menu component ready and let's go to the home page so all we need to do is we need to construct the home page validator so this particular class we need to construct we can use constructors to build it we can use different ways to build it but here why i'm using builder is builder gives you two two advantages one it still maintains the immutability that the constructors provide and also you have an option to skip few things if you don't want okay so that's that's the advantage of using builders and it's also a little more readable as well right so let's go to the home page now we have two more components so first i want to build home page validator dot builder and then first i want to build the header name right I, uh, sorry the east marketplace link present okay and here this is coming from top menu component dot is right and after that i want to do logo source text i want to get this from top menu component logo source string and at the end this particular dashboard is in the you know you can split this into a different component but for time being i'm just putting into the home page itself so now i simply say dot um, header name what is this header name so it should be dashboard right so i'm just getting the text out of it so header i want to get the text out of it so i can simply say page actions helper dot get attribute and then this is header and i i can simply use the same one that we have get attribute uh, or you can directly use get text you don't have to restrict yourself right you want to get tag name you can do that so all it needs is it takes in a web element and returns the text that's it you can do anything else you want right so now i can replace this with method reference so it's much more readable and at the end i can use build right so i want to build this whole thing so i can construct the home page validator now we have the home page validator like again guys i have just used three fields even if you want 100 fields you can validate 100 of them so but yeah we are not going to validate 100 but at least 10 15 you want to validate you can do that but it's much more readable and once you construct this it's going to be very easy so now you can go to the home page test and in the home page test you can simply say uh, new login page log into this application get the home page validator so this is going to return new home page validator now you have a pojo that you want to validate so now it's very very simple so i i created a class called as home page assert okay i created a page called as home page assert again guys if you haven't watched my custom assertions using assert j i leave the link in the description please do watch that so i want to validate um, our home page validator so i'm using a, i have created a class called as home page assert that extends the abstract assert again guys abstract assert is an is an abstract class from your assert j which takes in the what is the class current class and the what the class that you are going to validate so i am passing this is the one that i want to validate but i also used you know a uh, static method and private constructor so that you know i i can provide more readability with the with the help of the static method so if, if somebody passes me this home page validator i'll simply pass to new home page assert and then i'll pass this to constructor i also i am using soft assertion so that let's say uh, if i use hard assertions here let's say if there is a problem here we don't know what is the result of these two so i don't want to do a hard assert here i want to do a soft assert but nobody knows all these things see i have abstracted away all these things and the code looks very very easy and at the end i'm saying assert all which means i'm i'm kind of doing soft assert so the intention is is very clear that we are doing soft assert but i have not used soft assertions new soft assertions here so it's very more readable and understandable right and once you do this okay final soft assertions assertions and here i'm simply saying header name equals right so i want to validate i i will get a thing that i want to validate so this actual will be the actual dot so if you notice this is your whatever you pass whatever the class that you are passing to validate that will be stored in the actual okay so you can i have exposed the getter methods in the validator class so you can get all these things so whatever that we set in the home page whatever we set here is basically we are retrieving it here right and then 
that's why I'm saying actual dot get header name. This is what we get from the UI. And I want to assert that actual is equal to the expected header that we basically passing it here, right? So that's that's much readable. And the same way I'm returning this because uh, you know I can I can change this assertion and write more fluent way of assertions. And look logo source contains, and I want to check whether this actual text contains the expected text that we are passing here. Again, guys, you can also move this. Uh, to the to the to the to this particular class and then hot code it here. That's up to you. But in my case, I want this to be much more uh, scalable uh, so that I can validate different different things. Uh, and also, is marketplace link present? Uh, I have added new with fail message because let's say if this fails, it will just sell uh, expected true but found false. I don't want that error message. I want the error message to be much more cleaner. So I'm using marketplace link not present. Again, this is also a supplier interface implementation. So guys, I'm using a lot of lambdas. Please do watch my Java playlist. You can understand all these things. It's pretty easy and pretty cool. And at the end, I'm doing, I'm calling assert all. If somebody calls this, I'm doing soft assertions dot assert all. Until this is called, whatever you have evaluated uh, will not be, in, you know, will not be actually asserted. So once you this, you call this, everything will be asserted at once. You get the Error message. So let's try to run it. Uh, if something is not working, there is no point of you know creating them. So let's try to run and see what's happening. So the website is getting loaded. I have a very poor internet today, so pardon me if it takes a little bit of time. But again, guys, if you have any interesting problems that you want me to solve uh, something like this, please let write to me or put it in the comments. So guys, you notice it just validated all the things. Uh, I normally validate if something is working fine by failing something. Let's say I do something like this. Let's see whether this is working. And also I can also hey, it is false and see whether this what's happening. And guys, I'm using at the rate test from the J, J unit. OK, and you can pass these expected values from 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 your uh, CSV source, whatever, if you want to parameterize this. But in this case, I don't want to parameterize, so I'm just simply using it here. So yeah, if you notice, the tests have failed, and the failure is pretty clean here. First, the marketplace link not present. Yes. Second, expected dashboard one, but was only dashboard. The third assertion is actual as this. It actual to contain this, but it didn't contain logo one dot png. It just contained logo dot png. So there is three assertions. Assertions are pretty clear. Um, this is what exactly we want to achieve. So let's revert all this, uh, and then yeah. So logo one. And let's go here and make it as true. That's all I have to cover in this particular video. I'll, I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye bye from home. Then again, guys, if you haven't liked this video, please do like and share it with your friends and spread the good clean code across the community. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye bye.